yes. But you have to eat all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if a candy comes to chocolate, great. Right? So, so wrapped in chocolate sauce and have a bad Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, I think we can start. Hello everybody, welcome to the last session of Saturday. Um, it's gonna be really a personal one. I was thinking a lot about actually doing it or not, but um, I gave it at another camp and it was a good experience to give it. So 
it's about um, my experience, so it's a lot of things that I'm going to show you that really worked for me and things that didn't work for me. Um, it doesn't mean that they will immediately work for you, but I feel we are not sharing enough experience in other stuff related to Drupal. So we are sharing everything about Drupal, but we are not sharing enough about other things, like what it means to run a company, what it means to be a CTO, what it means to be a business owner. So my name is Michael, or Schnitzel. Um, it should be a map. It's not really good visible, but um, I kind of live in Zurich, in Austin, and in Cape Town at the same time. So um, our company has three different locations, and I'm the group CTO of Amazi. So we have three different locations in these places, and I'm the one that flies around and makes sure that all teams are happy, makes sure that um, the locations um, know of each other and stuff like that. So I'm... You can find me in a lot of different places. One short intermediate thing, you maybe saw people walking around with these team schnitzels, or there are also some batches over there. So um, there's a reason for that, not just because I like to print. So there is a director at large position at the Drupal Association board. So the Drupal Association has a board, and two of the board members are voted by all of you, the community. So these are called at large, and every year we vote for a new one. And on Monday, the next voting starts, so um, it starts on the 7th of March, and I'm one of them which runs for the board. If you want to know about it, why I think um, it is important. <laughs> That's what? That's why he's chocolate. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. There's more, by the way. Um, <laughs> yes, so if you want to know why I feel I would be good to represent more European, or actually more a global person, because one of the reasons I think right now is there is too much um, Americanized. We have a too much Americanized Drupal Association. So, um, but please go on the board. There is a page with a whole candidate profile. There's also um, video recordings of um, where we talk about whatever. So it starts on Monday, so inform yourself and please go voting. It's for all of us to represent of us at the board. And now let's go to the other interesting thing. So, I started in 2010 uh, at Amazi. I was the deputy CTO. So there was somebody else that did that. I started at only Amazi Labs. We were six people at that point, and we had two developers, and one of them was me. So uh, we really bootstrapped from the beginning. There was nothing uh, big there, and um, we were only based in Zurich. So everybody was working in Zurich. We went sometimes in different places, but Zurich was where we had the office and stuff like that. And we did Drupal only. So we, they built websites only with Drupal and that. Fast forward, so yeah. So there was a, a CEO, there was a coach manager, a designer, and um, what was the, oh, a content writer. So we have a really, really mixed team and stuff like that. Fast forward, <laughs> five years later, I'm no longer the deputy CTO, I'm the group CTO. Um, we have two companies which provide two different services, Amazing Labs, which does the Drupal part, and Amazing Metrics, which does the analytics and marketing optimization stuff. We are 35 people as of right now. We have 20 developers, where I'm not one of them anymore. So <laughs> um, and we have three different offices, as I said. We have offices in Zurich, in Austin, and in Cape Town, South Africa. And Drupal is not the only focus anymore. It's still a really big focus, but having another company like Amazing Metrics, we are not only doing Drupal. So that's my history. That's where I came from. That's where I learned all my experience. So, and I would like to tell you now, in specific things, what I learned in each of them. And, um, and basically, what I would like to do is really sending my, myself a letter with that presentation that I'm doing five years ago or four years ago. I think that would have helped me a lot. So unfortunately, you cannot time travel. Doesn't work, uh, or not yet. Um, maybe we ever gonna go start a company that does that. That would be cool. But um, it's really about my personal experience you will hear about. The first of them, hiring. <coughs> Basically, if you wanna grow, if you wanna serve multiple locations, bigger clients, you have to hire. And over the past over the past years, I hired a lot of people and I got a lot of experience. 
one of the biggest one is definitely higher slow fire fast. Um, it is, especially for us, really, really important that the people that are working for you every day match your culture, match your team. And if you realize that they are not, you should really, really be up um, and getting rid of them. One thing I learned that, as, that I've been told multiple times and I never really understood, never agreed to, if you add one more person to an existing team, you will have an, a completely different team. It's not the same. It's not the existing team plus one. It's another team. They will behave different. They will act different. They will be different. So that's one thing. And that also means you have to give the team time to adapt to a new person. You have to give the team to understand how does the whole team now work. And that requires time. So you cannot just add and remove. It's not a Drupal module that you can just enable or disable. It's unfortunately not. And one thing that I also learned is if you hire because of pure need, you're too late. Because you will make decisions because you need that person. You really need, let's say, that backend developer. Or you really need that project manager. And then a person comes, and it's maybe not a really perfect matching person. And you're going to hire that person because you really think you need that person. It can be really dangerous. And that happened to us multiple times. I know it's really hard. How do I hire if I don't even know what I need yet? It's, of course, it's really hard. But we just try to think about, OK, who could we need in maybe a year so we can already start looking and whatever. And another thing that I really realized is open your vision where you're going to hire. And that's, we're going to see more about that. Right now, we have a really, really strict and quite long hiring process. And at the beginning, we were really fast in hiring. We said, like, okay, you, you look a person that would fit. Um, you live in Zurich. You have a bit of Drupal. Let's start. We could do it completely different now. The first thing we do is we do interviews. So the person comes in either via Hangouts or via face-to-face, -face, and we just do an interview with maybe the CEO or the, the next uh, the member or the, the manager of that person. And it's just going to be an interview where we talk, where we explain what a Macy is, where we want to go, why we need that person, just talking. And if we feel that that person fits, we're going to bring them at the lunch. So it's really important for us that the person meets the team really fast, that the team sees as well who are we hiring, because we're basically hiring for them. The team itself does not hire the people because they have other stuff to do. So me as a manager, I'm hiring people, but I'm hiring them for the team. So for me, it's really important that the team meets them really early. And we at the Macy, that's specifically for our company, we have lunch every day together. Everybody goes out, grabs lunch somewhere, brings it back, and eats in the office. So we have like a kitchen part, and we bring people there. So it's really important that they see how we do things, how we, how we behave as a social group. So they get, go to a team lunch. And then we also do a skill test. And that's mostly at the same time. So we tell the people, hey, come in at 11. We're going to introduce you. We're going to have lunch together. And then we do a skills test, or however we do it. But I want to see what the person does. And that's one thing, the skills test, is one thing that I was thinking a long time about, oh, it's way too crazy. It's way too hard to set up a skills test. It is. It is definitely hard to set up a skills test that really that you can test out, like DevOps, like front end, like back end, or whatever. But it's the only time that you will actually see that person working, what the person will do later for you. So if I could tell myself, invest time in making a skills test. And if you've done it once, you can reuse it. Like we have now a skills test for front end, we have a skills test for back end, we have a skills test for, for DevOps. And we let the person work, and they already see, they see how we work, they see like if they are not used to Drupal, they have to work in Drupal because I want them at the end of the day saying, yes, I want to work with Drupal, especially in front end. We saw a lot of people that say, I'm really good in JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. That's great. But they have to work with Drupal. And just working with Drupal is a completely different situation, especially with Drupal 7. It gets much better with Drupal 8, but it's still. Then we do more interviews. We have small teams. So what I want is that everybody of the team sits with that person together and does an interview of at least half an hour, better an hour. 
There is no topic defined. The person can ask, they can discuss whatever they want. It's just from a personal level that they can say, yes, I like that person, I would like to work with that person. Some employees of mine, they have a list, they have 10 questions, bam, 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 they ask me questions. Some others, they just talk about life. They go out and walk with them together. Just, it's, I, I don't want to give them specific topics, but I just want to let them having time. Because at the team lunch, there are 25 people sitting there. So y you don't have the possibility. And we also allow every employee to tell themselves, I want to do an interview as well. So there are some people that will work with that person all the time together. They have to do an interview, and others, they can if they want to. And then it's a team's decision. It's not the decision of the management. It, will, it is at the end, it is the decision of the management if it's possible in terms of money, in terms of strategy, and stuff like that. But we want to first know from the team, would you like to work with that person? And we ask them two specific questions. First, would you go with that person to a beer? Is that person somebody you would like to hang out? Another question is, for example, what you can ask is, would you spend with that person, or let's say, imagine you're flying together at the Drupalcon and you have a layover somewhere for one hour. Now the second plane is delayed and you have to spend six hours with that person at the airport. Is that experience, is that thinking about that, spending six hours with that person, is that a, f a good or a bad thinking? Because if it's a bad, it's probably not a person that they want to really spend time with. Then you can do it more Swiss style, because we have an active military where every man has to go. You can ask them, would you go to war with them? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, I think we can choose that. Um, so that's another, but it's really this questions like, it's not about, would you work with that person? Because then the people start to think about their skills and they say, yes, because the skills that person has is really important for me right now. So I want to work with that person, but that's not actually, they, yes, they maybe want to work with them for two weeks, but ongoing, if they don't like that person after two weeks, they will say, well, so you know, the skills, they're really good, but I, I just don't like to be with that person around. And they will be eight hours per day. They will be in the slide stack channel. They will review their code. They will sit in the same room. So it's really important. So we let the team do the decision. And one other thing that I've learned during that time is take notes. Because the person is really involved in a lot of things. It can be that at the end, the team says no. And imagine you are per somebody that applies with us. You go through all these steps. You have hours of interviews. And at the end, I'm telling you, no, no, no. That's it. And then the person will ask, yeah, but why? So you have to, and I feel, we have to provide that person reasons why not. And that you can only do with taking notes. So if we expect from a person to go through this whole process, I feel that person can also expect from us, we telling them why we feel that person is not good. And you can only do that if you take notes, because the whole process can take multiple days. And especially if you have multiple people joining and coming at the same time, you will completely forget why, what did you say at that? So everybody that takes an interview has to do, has to take notes that we later on can also argue a no or argue a yes because sometimes the people want to know why do we think there's a good person. One other thing I said before is about the vision. So where do we actually hire? Of course, job platforms. Jobsdrupal.org, you maybe have a local one, whatever. But <coughs> we also hire on Twitter, Facebook, Stack Overflow. We hired multiple people via Twitter. They sent us, hey, that job profile sounds really interesting. So we got their name. We even one of my people that I just promoted as a tech lead, he saw a job and he tweeted us and said, you know, that would be a really cool job, but I'm not up to it. I'm not experienced enough yet. So I said, doesn't matter, come in, we have a meeting, I can teach you skills. I cannot really teach you character. That changing a pe person's character is really hard, but I can teach you skills. So we hired a person, one of the best employees I ever had, ha applied via Twitter and he actually said, I, was, I wasn't really sure that if I should tweet that now. Why should I tweet to a company saying, I don't think I'm the right person? <laughs> but it worked. You have friends. Tell your friends. 
you have family, you can hire from family. We have multiple situations in our company where two people work with us as are a couple. It works. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's maybe a bit more complicated, but it works. We are not specifically against hiring somebody from family or so. You go to events, you show yourself. Your people represent yourself at Drupal cons, Drupal camps, wherever. We specifically send people around and tell them, talk about if we have um, a job open. So basically, you're hiring all the time. <laughs> there is no situation where you're not hiring. There is no situation where you're not representing yourself when you're wearing like a hoodie of your company, when you're giving a procession or whatever. And it's also not you as the manager hiring, it's the whole team hiring all the time. So um, that is one thing that I think I could have done better in the past of just thinking about like where else could I, could I hire. So let's say we hired a person and it is the first day. The first day comes and that person comes in. One thing that we keep really, really high is the first day everything has to be ready. And I really talk about everything. So we have a blog post written on the first day when the person comes. We have the website ready. Why? What I want is that person goes home on the first day, goes to his family, his friends, opens the website of our company, and the person is on the team page. The person is a part of the team from the first second on. Yes, there is maybe a trial period or whatever, but we have to show that person that it is now a part of the team. We did the worst thing once, but it took us two weeks to get a person on the website. And the thing was, the person was telling us later on, I wasn't sure if I'm like really part of the team yet. Because we did not publicly say, that person is now part of our team. So that thing, the blog post on the website, goes on on the first day. It's really hard, and I just failed this week. I'm not saying I'm perfect in that, but it is something that I really want to do, and I'm giving a lot to make it possible. Then also, tech stuff. We have a budget that people can decide their own what they want to use, in terms of screens, in terms of mouse, in terms of keyboards, in terms of <laughs> notebooks, whatever. But it is ready when the person comes in on the first day. So I feel the first day is again the first impression you do to the person. It is really important that the person, when he comes to the first day, that we as a company make a good expression. And if you wonder how that looks like, it looks like that. <laughs> so that was Maria. She started a couple of months ago in the Major Labs Austin, and that was her first day. It's basically Christmas. <laughs> and please don't unpack this stuff. There is somebody, there's multiple people hired at Apple that think about the unboxing experience of the products. So let them <laughs> unbox it. <laughs> if you unbox things ten, 10 times a year because you're the manager, cool. But that person, yes, the first day will be completely unproductive. But it is a good experience. That person will feel welcome. And you see, we are not only giving um, tech they receive a backpack with a Macy, they receive t-shirts, they have, sometimes they even have their business cards ready on the first day. And that's just something, because that person did a huge step. It, that person decided to change companies, to go out in the wild, to go to a team. So the easier you make it for that person the first day, the better. Firing, to be complete honest, is one of the harder things that I did. <coughs> and I'm even writing with fucking hearts. It is really, really hard. So one thing that I learned about firing, first of all, you as a manager will not know all the things that's gonna happen in the team. Even though you say, I'm part of the team, I'm sitting there every day, you will not know everything. So the team, you have to listen to the team, <coughs> you have to listen to them. And one other thing that I learned, and it's had specifically different cultures in if you have companies in a lot of different places, there are some cultures in the world where a person, even though 
that she she does dislikes work with another person. If you ask that person directly, she will tell you first all this time. So it takes time to realize what's actually going to happen. And we had cases where I went to a team and I talked to them, and they told and I asked them, "How is everything going? All is good, all good." I learned that that evening, while being out with the people and just hanging out, that all the employees were searching for another job already. So, and when in the morning when I came there, that wasn't the case. Like, it's completely changed everything. So it needs time to understand what is really happening at a team. And if you realize that something like that happens, figure out what is the problem. And in that, prob in that case, it maybe is a specific person. Maybe it is the office that is not good. It can be a lot of different things, but in, that, in so some situations, it, it is a person. And then, what I learned, it is really important to define clear goals and deadlines with that person. To sit with that person together and say, hey, something is not going good. And most of the, per most of the time, that person will also know that, that there's something not good. And then what we do is define goals and deadlines to say, okay, we want to make it better. We want to, we're not immediately stopping at that, at that point, but we define clear goals and deadlines so that person also knows, okay, I have to improve on specific areas, whatever it is. And one other thing, if you define with that person, <laughs> let's, say, let's say the problem is time tracking. That person is really bad at time tracking and you define for the next two weeks, I want to see time tracking every day good. Every evening time tracking is done or whatever the rule in your company is. And now the person does it half of the time. You could say now, well, it, the person never did it. So it's 50% better, you know, it's better, but you did not reach the goal. Because what you will do then is you say, okay, let's do another two weeks. You give them a second chance and they improve 50% again and they're only at 75%. So one thing that I definitely is like just a baby step is not a reached goal. Yet. If you define a goal with the person, expect that. And if the person does not reach that, don't say yourself, don't lie to yourself. And I did that myself way too much. To lie, yes. Um, it's not specifically about, I mean, we, hi we fired people after two years because it didn't go well, or we fired people after three months because it didn't go well. So in Switzerland, there is legally that within three months, you can fire a person within one week. So the, the, the notice time is one week. After that, it's three months. So it makes a huge jump. So the first three months, or like the trial period, and there you look specifically, okay, is it working or not? And I feel if the person doesn't fit, you will realize really fast. What, what is there is just that people were like in a new position and that didn't work out or stuff like that. So in firing overall, don't wait too long. Why? Or you can ask yourself, how would you feel if that person is gone? Like one problem that we had was that um, we say we want to be nine o'clock in the morning, we want to have a stand up and everybody has to be there. And one person is, was late all the time. That was only one of the problems, but that was one because it didn't fit the team. It didn't work. Every time that person, or well not every time, but a couple of times. And I, I was really like, and at one point I really asked myself because every day in the morning at 8.59, when I opened my notebook to prepare the stand up, my back of my mind told me, is that person going to be late or not? It's like a constant thing that uh, like kept me nervous because I wanted that person to not be late. But it could happen and it stressed myself. So I was asking myself, would I be happier if I don't have that thing in the back of my mind? And I waited so long that I had to say yes. So that told me, okay, maybe it's time to discuss and stop. And one other thing that I did not realize, let's talk about the getting too late to the office in the morning because you have a specific time. 
your team is suffering as well. It's not only you, your team is suffering. And suddenly, your team is saying, well, if that person can come too late, and if that person gets, can do that for over six months, because I was sitting with that person together and say like, you cannot be too late and it's improved and you cannot be late and it's improved and you cannot be late and improved, but it never was there every day. The team told me, well, why should I come at nine o'clock? And suddenly, you're not having one problem, you have 20 problems because all of them, and then you can fire the person and you also have to undo all the stuff that, that the other people just said, what well, I can do that. So one thing that I completely forgot is that it's not only you suffering, it's not only you realizing these problems, it's the whole team also, and they start to adapt to that. So they get also sloppy. Everybody was coming suddenly at 9.02. And maybe it's not a big thing for you, but in Switzerland that's two minutes too late. <laughs> <laughs> you will miss a train. Okay, let's go on careers. So, think about careers paths. And that's one thing that I did really bad. Um, because you, f you hire people and they're really happy with their jobs and then it continues. So, um, and not only focus on leadership. So, you can grow a person into a lot of different areas. Maybe they're not interested in, in leading a team of 10 people after five years. We, I have cases where they specifically tell me I'm interested in growing but not in leadership skills. I'm like interested in growing in other stuff. So that person is like now is like um, responsible for teaching new people for onboarding or something like that. So there's a lot of different ways on where your employees can grow to but think about them. Generate a plan, give people opportunities. So and also ask the people what they want. So we do half year reviews with employees and I specifically ask them, like, where do you want to go? What is your goal? Where do you... And one other thing is also be clear about rights and duties. Like if you promote somebody, <coughs> make sure that when that person signs that promotion, that they know what their duties are for that new job, but also make sure that they know what their rights are. Like for us, a team lead, which is in a higher position, has, is part of the management and therefore the work time, in Switzerland we have 42 hours, they actually have to work then 45 hours. It's a legal thing, whatever. And that came up at one point and everybody freaked out because they didn't know. I never told them. I knew because I was in that position already, but I completely forgot to tell them. And not only I forgot to tell them, I also forgot to tell them about their rights as the new because now they can hire people, they can define their own tools. Like we have a front-end lead and he defines its own tools. He, he defines if you use Gulp or Compass or whatever. So it's a right that that person has, but I as a company also expect some duties, like if we have to finish a project, you're maybe the person that's gonna stay longer. So be clear about what you, you expect and give to your employees. And one thing that I have to definitely tell, the best job will be boring after three years. <coughs> it's, it's, I saw it for myself, I saw it with my employees. It will be the case that even you are the, have the best job, after three years, there's lacking of challenge, lacking of new things. And so be ready that your employees can follow a path and know where it's going. Delegating. The second fucking hardest thing you will do. <laughs> so who knows about the 70% rule? <coughs> who has heard about that? Okay. 80. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Eight, or 80-20, 70-30, whatever. <laughs> so I read that because I realized I have to delegate more because I was working 12 hours per day, didn't work out, um, it works out, but not for long. So the 70% rule or the 80% says 70% is good enough. If something can be done by somebody with only 70% of where you could do 100%, it's good enough. And you should keep the tasks that 100% require. So I read that everywhere. 
And that's like, that's how you should delegate. And I was trying, and I was trying, and <laughs> it was the fuck. It did not work out. It doesn't work because I, I didn't realize one thing. So I, I did not, I knew that I should delegate, but I did not realize why I should delegate. And let, let, let me explain. So let's say you have two tasks. You have task A, and the business impact is medium. Whatever it is, it can be implementing something, it can be hiring somebody, whatever, but you define that's a medium thing. And now you have a task B, and that business impact is an Excel. So it's really, really important, like trying out Drupal 8 and figuring out that you should use it or not, or whatever, it can be anything, just something that is more important than the other thing. But you only have time to do one of them. So now, there's a 30% chance that that person that will take on task A will fuck it up. That's the 70-30% rule. Only give them 70%. 70% is good enough. So there is a chance that it's not going to work out. But <laughs> if you give that person, or if you let somebody do the task A because it's less important, if you pr the task B that you will do that will require 100% and that you will do hopefully not fuck up, but it protects like the, the impact of the not going well task A is, is less. And one experience that I did is like project management. So should I give, like I, I'm, 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 I'm getting a client and I'm introducing them to the company and everything and we start working together and then at one point I'm realizing, oh, I cannot do project management anymore. So I give it to somebody else, or should I do that? Like, no, I'm, I mean, I don't want to lose that client. So that's the task A, and the task B is hiring or finding new clients. So I'd rather give my existing client to one of my employees, and I will maybe lose that client. I will maybe lose it, because 70%. It's not 100%, right? there is a chance. But I can focus on task B, which means getting new clients. So if I get two more clients, because I did task B, I can protect the task A with that, or I can handle that. And that's what I'm using now. So it's still the 70-30% rule, or the 80-20, or whatever we want to call it, but for me, now it makes sense. Why should I delegate? And also, the other thing, it will happen. It will happen that tasks are, but how did you learn to reach 100%? You fucked up. <laughs> it is part of learning to fail, but then to stand up and continue walking. Allow your employees to do that. They will. You can. You can protect them. You can mentor them. You can coach them. But they need to realize that how it works in getting up again. And one other thing that I also that showed me after I started doing that. You don't know yet what other tasks are waiting when you start to delegate. It took me time to realize that when I had time to think, to reflect myself, to reflect the company, that I realized that I have to do some specific tasks that I would have never seen before because I was so deep into working and doing, giving 100%. And that can be all kind of stuff. You will sit in the office, you will not get bored can tell you that. If you delegate, you will not get bored. Because there's new things coming in all the time. <coughs> and one other thing that we started to do is a fail cake. I said before, failing is good. So one thing we do is we do a fail cake. If somebody fails, and we do that specifically in DevOps, so the DevOps team, if somebody fails, perfectly fine, you have to bring a cake. Next level. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the seed set H1 cluster fail cake. So we fucked up the cluster. It was down for 10 minutes that it shouldn't have been. And we brought a cake and all is good. We're not doing the mistake anymore, but everybody knows that we also failed. So don't try to cover up the failures because it, has, it will be part of it anyway. Okay, next thing, documentation. Um, let's say you do one task once a year. I'm doing the whole thing since five years. So I did tasks that I never documented five times and every time I have to figure out again how I did it, I'm actually. 
So, um, so I'm asking myself, how can I prevent to explain or do or do something, anything a second time, even though it's maybe only once a year? So think about five years if you talk about documentation. Write down things that you do, because that will allow somebody else to do them. Automation. Find good tools. Find tools that allow you to focus on the things you should really do. Like in our case, we are not having our own mail server. It's not our part of our business. So we're having somebody else that works for the mail server and we are doing the focus. Right? And write your own tools if this is maybe necessary. But what I learned is let tools define your process. Like we have a billing process right now implemented in three different locations that no tool can handle because we created our own billing tool or our own billing process. So now we have to build our own billing tool because telling 15 people how the new process works and the whole change management around that, I feel is way harder than just building your own tool. But if you would have chosen a billing tool before, we would have started with, the, with an existing process. So that's something to think about. So these are all the tools that we use. The slides, by the way, are online. You don't have to take pictures of it. Um, we use all kinds of stuff. Um, so we have Google Apps, we have Max, we have Slack, we have GitHub, we use Browser Stack, we have New Relic for servers, we use CNS, we have Dropbox, Jira, Compliance, PHP. Find your tools, try, try them out, introduce them to the team, they will make your life easier. Next focus. Define who you are as a company and focus on that. And think about possible costs if an opportunity comes. Like, let's say you're a Drupal shop and we had a case where a company came to us and said, we would like you to do an annual report. And we don't need a CMS for it because we just need HTML and CSS. So we decided we're going to use Kirby, which is a PHP framework, static text in there, everything. And now every, t and it was good, at that point it was a good decision, but now we cannot deploy it because everybody knows how to deploy Drupal, but nobody knows how to do Kirby. And then we think, oh, okay, wait, how do we do backups? And how do we do that? And how do we do that? And how do we do that? So at that point it was maybe the good decision, but on the long term, we're getting rid of it again. So, yes, yeah, so the first day is the first impression or something that's in all the slides. So. <laughs> Next thing, be flexible. Don't oversleep trends. The web is changing like crazy. Focus on what's happening. Try out new things. Try out new things as your own. Try out new things as a company. You might need it in the future. Like front ends, there's, every new, uh, there's a new JavaScript front end every day. So um, try them out, figure out which will really work. And what I've learned is that if you are a flexible company, it will generate you flexible teams and flexible employees. So if you show that you're flexible in the way how you work and adapt, they will do the same on their side. If you are completely following one path and saying, no, I'm not doing anything at all, they will do the same. And sometimes there will be situations where you need a flexible team because out of any reason. Then we all talked about company stuff how to be yourself in terms of people and hiring and firing. At the end, it's still you doing the whole thing. So what I try, and I'm failing, but I'm trying really hard to sleep for at least six hours. It's, I, for myself, try it out for yourself, but I, if I sleep less, I'm maybe not really nothing on the next day, but I'm realizing it's days late. The next drink. <laughs> and honestly, drink a lot. I tried a lot of tools that tell me to get up on the computer, like that automatically locks your screen and say like, you should walk around, whatever, I disable them 10 years later. <laughs> Never worked. The only thing that that works is drink. Why? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, there's no way to disable your body. 
There is no way. You can disable a tool. What? No, plain water. There is nothing. Yes. So the Okay, sorry. <laughs> Consume water then. Drink water. Um, it's actually one thing that we say in, in our office. In, in, uh, there is no other drink than water. If, there, if people want to drink um, sweet stuff, they have to bring it themselves. We do not provide water. We do provide beer, though. So <laughs> there is the fridge. There is one section that is only reserved for beer. So no, drink. Really, it helps. And it's really drinking, having the bottle on the table. And what we also tried, and it really works, is having a Slack bot that reminds everybody of drinking. So there's a Slack bot that every hour, randomly, in the Slack channel says drink. And you hear the sound of the whole team, like. <laughs> and also, what I realized, moving your body helps you to think. So there's a lot of times where I'm sitting in front of a problem, and and I'm sitting there, and I have to pee, and I'm saying, like, fuck, like, I want to fix it, I want to fix it, but you're not. And you're getting up, and you walk three steps, and you have the solution. Multiple times happened to me. And also, find something that relaxes you, and it can be really everything. What I do, I shower every morning. I shower every morning, even though I have to stop the six hours rule, so... If I can only see five and a half hours and can still shower, I do that. Because showering in the morning helps me personally to think about my day, what I'm gonna do, what I'm not gonna do, or whatever. But really, it can be anything. It can be watching a favorite TV show, going to run, whatever you, just find something that relaxes you in a time, in a short amount of time, <coughs> and gives you to think. Then also, one thing that I definitely started way too late is get a coach. Get some, or a group, or whatever. Get something that you can talk about these things. There's a lot of times where I talk to my coach, and I'm, and I'm saying I have a big problem. I, I don't know how to handle that. And he asks me, I should just tell him. And while I'm explaining him, I'm, I see the solution myself. Like, and it's weird, and I'm trying to do myself, like, I'm trying to do, like, going to shower and whatever, it doesn't work. I have to explain it to somebody else, and then I realize what the problem actually is. And it helped me to go through a lot of different things that, that, that we just heard. But it can also be a group um, of simple-minded people that you talk with each other and explain. So find other CXOs, whatever, of the same level, and talk to them. And really make sure that there's no blaming happening in the group. And one other thing that I learned is be reflexive. Do presentations like that. Maybe to yourself. Tweet about it, blog about it, think about what you did. And what I do is to do it once every week. On Monday morning, I'm thinking about the last week. Do I still like what I do? Is it something that I want to do? What I did last week, is that something I want to do this week? And sometimes I said no, because it's too much. And it has nothing to do with the amount of stuff I worked. Or I maybe worked 80 hours a week, and I said, yes, they're going to continue that. So it's not about the amount of hours. It's not about the stress. It's just, am I still happy with what I'm doing? And if you never ask yourself that question, you will realize way too late. Um, late, late. Yes, I'm now done. If anybody wanted sex with them, yes, <laughs> 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 so I'm done. So I just want to recap. So first, take notes during hiring, it will help you. Second, don't forget you're hiring all the time. Third, a baby step is not a reach goal when you're trying to fire. And your team is suffering, will get sloppy too. The first day for your employee is a really important first impression. You don't know yet what other tasks are waiting when you're delegating. They will fuck up. The best job is boring after three years. A flexible company gives you flexible teams. Think about five years when you're thinking about, should I document that right now, or should I just do it? Let tools define your process, and be reflexive. That's it. <laughs> Are there any questions? I think you maybe already mentioned about, do you often 
higher people that this plant will be developed and this don't like to practice yoga? Um, yes and no, it really comes onto the situation. I'm trying to hire people that know Drupal, but like right now in, in, in Zurich specifically, we're having a really hard time. So we're actually hiring people from outside of Switzerland that move for us. Because being a team of 20, we are not having a lot of resources to teach people. So I would like to be bigger. If you are bigger, you have a, bad, you have a different structure of cost and that would allow somebody to teach like somebody else. With 20, we don't have that. So we are right now still searching specifically for Drupal, but that's probably because more back-end, in front-end, we started to hire people that don't know Drupal. We tell them on the first day what they will get into, so they will have to work something on Drupal and they will kind of dislike on what they will do, but I will also tell them that this Drupal lady gets better. <laughs> um, but it is, that it is possible, I think, in front-end more, in the back end, at least for us right now, it's not happening. Other question? Um, I think you mentioned about like employees kind of what what we're striving to like learn new things and stuff. So do you kind of have like personal development plans that people do in kind of like you have signed work times for people to learn new techniques and tools or So the question was um, if we have a specific plan for employees to learn new things, um, so specific reserve time for themselves. Yes. Yeah, we are trying to do that. So we having we are having a thing that we call homework time that is reserved. Um, to be also honest, we are failing a bit because we have really we have employees that really want to get projects done. So they you know, I'm not want to learn that now because I want to finish the project. So you kind of have to force them a bit. Okay. Um, but what we are doing with, um, with, so we're using Scrum. So what we are doing, we're just injecting internal tasks into the Scrum teams that somebody of the team has to do. And that can be stuff like research AngularJS too. And so it's, uh, but we also, we definitely have employees that do it themselves and the others you have to force a bit more. Um, so what I'm trying to do is mostly creating actual projects where the people then have to learn on it. So let's say we do an internal project, we maybe do it with a new tool that nobody used before so that they also see a reason why they now should um, implement or research something. Because a lot of times you just tell them, yeah, look at all the JS frameworks. Yeah, the outcome will be a bit hard. Yes. Um, 